What's up everyone, how's it going? Good to see you, my name is Dan. Now, we're gonna jump in to another 10 states uh, and look at these, these crazy states, facts, crazy states, crazy facts about 10 more states. That's gonna get us up to number 40. That leaves one episode left after, after this. So if you haven't seen the first three episodes, then make sure you go and look at them first. I don't know what I'm pointing at. They're not over there. There's one there. I don't know. I, I'm not that good at edit, editing. That that probably did nothing. I got heartburn. Why is heartburn a thing? Like, how, what is it? But why does water not touch it? it, it it's painful here down, and water doesn't do a thing. But somehow milk helps. Does does milk help or does milk make it worse? I think it makes it worse. That's hot food, isn't it? It helps with spicy things, but not heartburn. What the fuck am I talking about? Number 31 is New Mexico. The capital is sky high. Now, is that like from from sea level or they all just blazed off their heads? We'll find out as we read on. Uh, <laughs> I think it's uh, uh, sea level, but yeah. This state's capital, Santa Fe, been to Santa Fe and it was lovely. Like we drove through it and I thought that Santa Fe was in Texas. What am I thinking of? What am I thinking of? El Paso. Yeah, um, uh, yeah. Um, that was that was dumb. This state's capital, Santa Fe, is the highest capital in the country. What? In the country? That's mad. Sitting at seven thousand square feet above sea level, the highest city in the world belongs to Colorado, whose Leadville is. 10,200 feet in altitude. Whoa, 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 whoa. Colorado is in, is in the States as well. So what are they talking, hang on. Oh, it's the capital. And Colorado has the highest city. Okay. Well, that's, I mean, not the best fact then, is it? If it said Santa Fe is the highest city in the world, and it's the capital, then it would be more impressive, but it's not even that high up, really. I've been to Santa Fe, and did, have I been to Santa Fe? I think I've been to Santa Fe, and I and I didn't experience any, like, thin oxygen, or... <laughs> yeah, the only thing is that, that's that's a bad fact. Like, like that's, that's just not that fun. I wish it was so something so much better. Like there's there's a billion snakes in in New Mexico or something. But no, uh, seven thousand square feet above. I mean, why does it can't be square feet? Why does it make it just makes it more confusing? Just seven thousand feet above sea level. Square feet and feet is different, isn't it? Fuck me. What am I talking about? Thirty two. New York. Finally, we're on to New York. I've been looking forward to New York. New York. New York. New York because I love New York when the first time I went there I, I studied it I know the map of New York I know the the underground um, yeah <laughs> I know the underground yay uh, yeah so I know the subway system and most of it anyway don't quiz me on it but um, yeah if I look at the map I can I can find out like where to go by just looking at a New York map because I studied it because I was obsessed with New York anyway so Let's read on on what this title is for this crazy fact. Itchy you knows. The New York City subway is always hours away from a devastating flood. What? I mean, that makes sense. It's like literally surrounded by water. Like, like Manhattan is just an island. Um, I, want, I need to read on about this. Fact. Much of New York City is built on swamp and other wetlands, and the city relies on a crucial system of 753 pumps. What? 753 pumps to remove 13 million gallons of water, street draining, and sewer flow every single day. Hang on, those, those numbers are insane. Let's just read that again a minute. New York City relies on a crucial system of 753 pumps to remove 13 million gallons of water a day. Every single day. Without them, much of the tunnels... Tunnels? Much of the tunnels would be drowned 
within a mere hour. What? So New York gets a power cut. You're underwater. You're literally underwater. So that's that's mad, isn't it? That's that's my favorite fact so far. I mean, we're only two in. But yeah, the first one was terrible. <laughs> North Carolina, it's home to most American Idol finalists. I'm not even going to read on. I'm sorry, anyone from North Carolina, you could get... It's disrespectful to read any more about that fact because I'm sure that your state has so much more to offer than most... American Idol finalists are from there. That's... Nah. I've been to North Carolina. It was a lovely place. Uh, I went like South Carolina to North Carolina. And it was, it seemed lovely. And not, not for a split second did I ever think, hmm, I wonder how many American Idol finalists live here. Fucking heartburn. Oh my God, why have I got such heartburn? I did have a Domino's. Yeah, I had a Domino's, didn't I? That didn't help. 34, North Dakota. Big chain pharmacies aren't welcome. Piss off, Walgreens. Jog on, CVS. They like to keep it local here. State law requires that most pharmacies be owned by local pharmacists. So Rite Aid, CVS, and Walgreens are out of luck. In 2014, Big Farah. Is that how you say that? Farah? Big Farah tried to change this, but their attempts failed. Bugger off, Big Farah. Just editing and I realise how much of an idiot I am. Farah. <laughs> yeah, Big Farmer. <laughs> so I haven't been to North Dakota, and it's definitely on the list. Uh, I have to go there. Um, the, the scenery looks insane. Um, I, I really want to do the northern states. So North Dakota, yeah. It's on the list. 35 is Ohio. Let's see what Ohio has to offer. I've driven through Ohio and um, Cincinnati. I can't, Cincinnati. Why can't I say that? Cincinnati? Cincinnati? That doesn't sound like a word anymore. Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Cincinnati, Ohio. <laughs> uh, yeah, we drove through Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, when it was when it was dark and all the lights were on and it looked like a really fun lively uh, city but we didn't stop we unfortunately we just drove through through uh, Cincinnati um, <laughs> but yeah I I I don't know why but um, I have like this little it's not it's not a connection I don't have a connection with Ohio but there's something about Ohio that that drags me well, I just hit the mic that just drags me in and I and I want to see more of Ohio I don't why? But anyway, let's read on. It's got the only flag in the US that isn't a rectangle. They have to be different, don't they? Go on. Fair play to you. Go on, Ohio. You be you. You be you. The swallowtail design, or burgie, was adopted in 1902. Features a long blue triangle meant to represent the state's hills and valleys with stripes meant to symbolize roads and waterways. I'll be honest. <laughs> It's a cool flag, like it is, but I wouldn't ever look at that and go, hmm, mountains, roads, and waterways. That, that looks just like it. It doesn't, does it? I mean, the blue bit looks like a mountain, but it looks like it's got a fried egg in the middle. A white circle in the middle serves as both the O in the state name and a reference to the Buckeye State. You learn something new every day, but it does look like a fried egg. 36, Oklahoma. It's the cow chip throwing capital of the world. I don't know what that title means. What the hell is a cow chip? Now looking at the picture, just the picture, they have these little tags in their ears and immediately I'm thinking, is that a cow chip? There's no way that that's, <laughs> there's no way that that's what that is. And just get a load of them and chuck them. It's, it, that's definitely not what this is. So let's read on. It's only a small sentence to describe what the hell cow chips are. Beaver, Oklahoma, features the annual world championship cow chip throw each April. It's April now. Might have to give this a little Google and, and find out and have a little watch. What is a cow chip, you ask? <laughs> okay, here we go. Why? It's dried cow dung. Fun. I mean, what are you doing, Oklahoma? Come on. 
I really like Oklahoma. It's got a special place in my heart. It does because um, me and my wife did a road trip across the states, and we stopped in Oklahoma um, on New Year's Eve in 2019. We went into 2020, and we were camped in our car on like on a lake. We were the only ones there, and um, it was absolutely beautiful. And like so Oklahoma I'm always going to think of like how beautiful it was but why does it have to be about throwing cow shit around <laughs> 37 is Oregon the largest living organism on earth lives in this state's blue mountains there we go finally we have got potentially a winner to a really good fact like possibly the best one because it's the best that the biggest the largest living organism on earth. It's not like in the country, in the town, in the... On earth. And the picture's disgusting. Measuring 2.4 miles across, its honey fungus is the Armillaria. 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 There we are. It takes me a little while, but then I get it. So let's do that again. Measuring 2.4 miles across, it's honey fungus of the Armillaria um, genus that is calculated to be anywhere from 1,900 to 8,650 years old. What the? What are those numbers? Like I know they're years, but like, why? Like, from 1,900 to 8,650. Like, it's a bit of a gap, isn't it? Why not to say, like, t between 1,000 and 7,000, somewhere around there? It's so... It, even though it's such a big gap, it's still so specific. So precise. Like, 8,650. I'll just round it up or down. And, okay. I've been to Oregon, but I've never seen the Armillaria genus. I don't know what that is, but... <laughs> Yeah. Number 38, Pennsylvania. Now, I have friends who live in Pennsylvania, so if any of you are watching, um, hi. <laughs> yeah, you guys are amazing. Um, we'll have to see you all soon. It's been a while. You're not watching this. You're just not. I'm talking to nobody right now. Uh, let's move on to the title. You can see Edgar Allan Poe's Raven. Who's that? I don't know who that is or what that is. Um, I'm sure I got a read on to find out, but straight away I'm thinking is some some guy called Edgar just lets his bird fly around. I, I, what does that mean? Who's Edgar Allan Poe? I feel like that's somebody like mad famous, and I don't know who it is. <laughs> Fact: You can see the Raven that inspired Edgar Allan Poe's famous poem, The Raven, at the rare book department of the Free Library in Philadelphia. I mean, a, a better fact than that is you can walk up the steps that Rocky ran up in Philadelphia. Like, it's not a great fact. It's not... <sighs> Originally the pet of Charles Dickens. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Originally the pet of Charles Dickens, which was then taxidermied and mounted, the bird makes an appearance in Dickens' story, Barnaby Rudge. I'm not a reader. As you can probably guess, I don't read stuff. <laughs> so this isn't like, wow, Charles Dickens' dead bird is stuffed and in a library somewhere. It doesn't appeal to me. But, you know, could appeal to you. Everyone's different. But more famously, this creature also inspired the melancholy Baltimore poet who published his poem shortly after reviewing Dickens' story to great success. Um, I was bored throughout that whole fact. I'll be honest with you. So you probably were as well. Um, so I'm sorry about that. I didn't write it. I'm just trying to read it. <laughs> 39 is Rhode Island. Fun fact from, from me to you, if you didn't know this already, it's the smallest state. I know something. It's the smallest state in the US. Now let's read on. Rhode Island. It has 1,021 people per square mile. That, that's mad. Yes, this is the smallest state in the country. Boom. Told you. But what it lacks in size makes up 
in sheer concentration. Yeah, so there's a ton of people there. Like, loads. 1,000 people per square mile. Wow. You can't swing a cat in there. What is that saying? You can't swing a cat. Who swings a cat? Wow! Like, what is... Do you, have you ever heard that before? Oh, it's a bit, a bit snug in here. You couldn't swing a cat in here, could you? Why would you want to? Number 40, South Carolina. Now, we have already heard North Carolina's fact. And it was... Shit. It wasn't fun, was it? It, it was... Pff, you... Yeah, it wasn't very good. At all. American Idol. God. So let's hope that South Carolina has something better. It's the last date of this video, so here we go. South Carolina. It's home to an insane amount of monkeys. South Carolina, you may have just won this video. That possibly is the best fact out of all of, all of the states I've read so far. Like, all 40, I think you might be at the top. I must read on. This state's Morgan Island is also often referred to as Monkey Island. Considering it houses 4,000 rhesus monkeys, 4,000, which are bred on this land mass in order to serve as medical testing. Ah, oh, no. Including AIDS, polio, and bioterrorism. I mean, for great causes. Obviously. But I wish it wasn't for medical, medical testing. Uh, I really want to go to Morgan Island or Monkey Island, however you want to call it. I don't, do, uh, do you think they, they allow tourism? I hope so. That sounds, that sounds amazing. Just going to a, an island full of monkeys. But yeah, if it's literally just like a big farm... That makes me sad. I don't want to leave this video on a sad point. <laughs> let's just, let's just pretend. <laughs> let's just pray that they're all happy and having fun and you can go there and pet them. So that's 40 states done. Um, I can't actually believe that we've covered 40 already. Um, but yeah, if you want to see the last 10, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like this video, leave a comment which state out of all of them, which state has been your favourite so far? Um, I think that mine is definitely South Carolina. I mean, who doesn't love monkeys? <laughs> I'll see you again. Thanks for watching. I don't know what else to say. Bye! <laughs>